Good morning, everybody. It's looking to be a beautiful day here in Murfreesboro, Arkansas, wherever you're at. I'm just praying God's blessing just shines down on you. Uh, and today we're going to continue in Luke chapter 12. I think this is a message that is timely for us. Um, I was in prayer with the elders of our church the other day, and this verse just popped into my head. And I want us to really kind of reflect on this before we go into Luke chapter 12. This is a letter to the church of Laodicea as dictated by John the Elder, or, or the Apostle John, and uh, uh, depending on who <laughs> you think wrote the book of Revelation, I believe it's the Apostle John. Um, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the words of the Amen, I love it, the words of the final word, <laughs> the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth, or the Greek word vomit you out of my mouth. For you say I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourselves and uh, the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and a salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I always con also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We're in an age nowadays where we don't want to offend anybody, aren't we? We like to sit down and keep things pleasant, but I'm going to tell you something that you should have already surmised from these Bible studies week after week. Jesus offended a lot of people. Point two, the church offends a lot of people. Point three, the truth offends a lot of people. And so we need to stand up boldly for Christ. We need to not look at our prosperity, not look at the things that we have, not look at what keeps us comfortable, but we need to stand up in boldness for Christ. We need to stop saying, I've prospered. We need to face the tribulation and trials when they come, because if we are making stances for Christ, we are told those times shall come. And so, I want to encourage you. Have no fear. Jesus also is telling us that today. Luke chapter 12, verse 4. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who can kill the body and after have nothing more they can do. But I warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. In other words, there is only one person to fear, and that is God Almighty. He is the one. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, according to Proverbs. And the fear of the Lord is not the same as the fear of man. We do not fear God that He's going to constantly punish us, but we hold Him in awe and wonder, and we bow and submit before Him, and we humbly come before Him. That's how we fear God. And so if we fear God, what else do we have to fear? What does the verse say? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God's with us, what or, or whom do we have to fear? Because all they can do, the worst they can do is kill our bodies. And Paul says this, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He says, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, when I'm living, I'm breathing out for Christ. When I'm dying, I'm home with Christ. So what is the worst that can happen to us, church? We worry about our prosperity. We worry about the status quo. We worry about being liked by our neighbors. I would rather my neighbors hate me and know the truth. Speaking the truth in love. Be careful. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, If I have all mysteries and all prophecies, but I have not love, I'm a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. We've got to be careful because we can speak the truth without love, and that does nothing for the cause of Christ. 
but always be thinking. The very first part of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We've got to be constantly focused on how awesome and wonderful and powerful God is. And then secondly, how we can advance the kingdom. The kingdom should be at our forefront. As we grow older, and one of our elders had pointed this out, and I've been saying this and quoting it over and over and over, but I think repetition, this is for me as well. The older we get, the less Christian friends we have, and I think that is one of the most tragic things that we can do. Because there's a world out there that needs Jesus. We need to be seeking and saving the lost. We need to be going to places where the religious folks never go. Why? Because that's where the lost is. Jesus went where the lost were. He hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners of all kinds. And he rebuked those who were considered religious and holy. So let us stand with boldness, fearing only God and not man and not the powers of Satan. Because uh, Christ told Peter, You are Peter and on this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So what have we to fear, church? We're going to finish our section here. I love this verse. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God, but the one who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, notice not if, when. When they bring you before the rulers of the synagogues and the rulers and authorities. Do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. See, Jesus forgives us when we blaspheme against Him, but the Holy Spirit, denying what the Holy Spirit is doing, that's the unforgivable sin. And when it comes down to it, we need to be bold. We need to not fear man. We not need, not need to fear the authority. Instead, publicly confessing Christ in everything and anything we do. When we go to the grocery store, God bless you. We are publicly proclaiming God. When we uh, tell people about our hope, we are publicly proclaiming Christ. And if we publicly proclaim Him before men, He will publicly proclaim us before His Father and the angels of heaven. But if we deny Him, then He'll deny us. The thing is, we need to not maintain the status quo. We need to get souls into the kingdom. We need to go out and we need to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all He commanded us. And we need to be whole. He is with us always to the very end of the age. Church, it's time to be bold. We are living in a time unlike any other. Why? Because it's a time that is now. It's, it's not the times of before. We are... are here, Jesus says, look, the fields are ripe with harvest. And ask the Lord of the harvest to send workers to his field. We need to stop fearing what man can do. Stop fearing about social norms and anxieties. And start fearing the Lord. Standing up and boldly proclaiming wherever we are what Christ is going to do. Some of us may lose jobs over it. Some of us may get arrested over it. Some of us may be brought before people over it. But that is the price we must pay. And I'm going to tell you there's going to come a time when I'm not going to be able to be in this office. I don't know if it's going to be my lifetime or if it's going to be a time in the future. But we need to prepare. Always prepare. Because the world is always at odds against the church when they stand up and stand for God in the way in which He commands them to. I'm going to pray over you for boldness. I'm going to pray that you stand with Christ. Like, share, get involved with the conversation. That helps our group grow and helps us get the attention and helps us uh, get the word and the message out that we're trying to get out. God bless you. We love you. Get involved with the conversation. Have a great day.